Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll deal with the topic that you will see, that you will find on page number 70. Please turn to it. On page number 70, we deal with the notion of having to compare different quantities from least to greatest or greatest to least. The four problems that we're going to do today, they are extra problems, they are bonus problems, they are not in the book. And once we finish those four problems, we'll do the three problems that you see that you see in the book. Here's the first one. We are being asked to compare 0 0.044 versus 49 versus 11 over 25. And we are being asked to compare these quantities. They will ask you to compare these quantities, uh, arrange these quantities rather, not compare them, arrange them. They will ask you to arrange this quantity to either in ascending order, in increasing order, or in descending order, in decreasing order. In other words, either from least to greatest, or greatest to, greatest to least. Whatever the, whatever they ask you, you have to pay attention to what the question is asking you because both of the answer choices are going to be, both of those arrangements are going to be in the answer choices. So you have to pay attention whether they're asking from the least to greatest or from greatest to least because otherwise after having done all the work and if you're not, after you're not paying attention, you might end up picking the other arrangement. Let's get going. Enough of the talk. What can we do? This is in decimal, this is in fraction, this is in fractions. We either have to convert everything in decimal or convert everything into fractions. Trying to convert this thing into fraction is not going to get us anywhere because we still have a 9, we have a 25. You see, we could convert this thing into a fraction by multiplying top and bottom by a thousand, which, is, which will end up being 444 four, four, four over a thousand. You divide top and bottom by 4 and you're going to end up with 111 over 250. Now, 250 happens to be an exact multiple of 25, it's 10 times, but you still have a 9 there. So trying to convert this, all of these into fractions is really not, it's not going to get you anywhere because then you're going to have to find a common denominator of 250 and 9. It's going to be a huge number. Let's, let's convert everything into decimal. Let's convert everything into decimal. This guy is already in decimal. What can we do to this, this guy to convert that into decimal? Well, it's very simple. It's 25. We talked about it before. We talked about it before. On day number 111, 110, this is our this is our fourth one in the, in, the, in, the, in the line. What we talked about was the fact that it's very easy to divide any number by a 10 or a 100 or a 1000 because you just have to move the decimal places. This is already more than a 10, so we can't really worry about dividing by 10, but we could certainly convert, we could certainly convert this thing to a 100 by multiplying top and bottom by 4. And if you were to multiply top and bottom by 4, we have not changed this value because 4 over 4 is just 1. But it does help us in the sense that now we know that 25 times 4 is 100, and in the top we get 11 times 4, which is 44. 44 over 100, essentially the quantity that they're giving us is 0.44. Here we have 0.444. Let's see what this gives us, shall we? We have to divide 4 by 9, which is precisely what we're going to do longhand. We're going to divide 4 by 9. Let's see what happens, okay? How many 9 does 4 have? 4 has no 9s. 4 has no 9. 4 is too puny to have a 9. It has 0 9s. Introduce a decimal, it becomes a 40. How many 9 does 40 have? 40 has 4 9s. 4 9s are 36. 4 9s are 36. With a remainder of 4, we introduce a 0. Oh, we get a 40 again. 4 9s are 36. Oh, we get a remainder of 4 again. We introduce a 4. 4 9s are 36. It's just going to go on forever. It's going to, it's going to go on forever. This, con this thing continues forever. So now we establish that 49 is simply 0.4 repeating. It is simply 0.4 repeating, which is what we're going to put down now. We need the room here, so we can erase all of this thing. It is 49 repeating, as you can see. It's 0.4 repeating, rather. It's 0.4 repeating. 0.4 repeating. Question is, how far do we need to go? Well, this one is 0.444. Pay attention. Pay very close attention. This quantity that's given is 0.4. 0.444, if we were to stop right here, it looks like these two are equal. But they are not equal because this one doesn't stop, this one doesn't end, this one goes on forever. So we have to go to the fourth fourth place. 
And once we have gone to the fourth place, all you have to do is make sure that all of them have the same digits after the decimal. This one has four, this one has three, introduce a zero. This one has two, introduce two zeros. That's it, we are done. We are done. Now, if you want, you can do the intermediate step, which is a baby step. You really don't have to do that, the next part that we're going to do, which is to multiply everything by, not a thousand. If you multiply everything by a thousand, it's going to move the decimal to three spots, but ten thousand. 10,000. If you multiply everything by 10,000, all of this quantity by 10,000, what does it give you? This becomes 444, which we really didn't have to do, or rather 4440, which we really didn't have to do. We can see it right there, it's 4440, this one is 4444, and this one is exactly 4400. That's what it is. This, be, this will become 4444. This will become 4,400. Let's arrange them, shall we? 4,400 is the least one. 4,444 is the greatest one. There you go, we have done so. The least was this guy. And since we are asked to arrange from least to greatest, this guy came from this quantity that was given to us, 11 over 25. That was the original quantity that was given to us, 11 over 25. And turns out that that quantity, when manipulated, is the least one. 11 over 25 is the least one. The greatest one we just found out was this one, which came from 4 9. And the one that belongs in the middle is this guy 4400, 4440, 4444. Even though this one actually goes on forever, we don't need, we don't need more than 4 digits. For comparison purposes, that's what we need. And that was. So, so we have left this one left, which was this one. 0 0.444. There you go. That's it. We're done. This is the smallest one. This is the greatest one. We're done. We have arranged them from the least to greatest. Even though the book may not give you something as complex as that, but if you can manage this thing, the purpose of this thing is to get some exercise, and if you can manage this thing, then of course you can manage anything that they, that, that, that may throw you in the, in the exam. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. By the way, if you want to get some more practice, if you want to get some more practice, not only on this concept, but on any other concept, you will find that we have solved every single math problem that appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition. The fifth edition, you will find the solutions to the T's fifth edition from day one through 80. For example, if you want to get some more practice on the concept that we're dealing with right now, watch day number 18. Just type in T's, T's math, day 18, and you will find them. In addition to that, we have uh, you will find another series on my channel, a series called Basic Math. Just type in Basic Math, day 64 and 65, and there is some more practice there. Let's do one more. We're going to do four of them. Let's do one more. See what we can do. And this time, we're going to pick up our speed a little bit. We don't have to go at such leisurely, such childish pace. Here is, here's the next one. We are being asked to compare 0 0.555 versus 11 over 25 versus 5, 9. Let's see what we can do, okay? We'll do it a little bit faster. So, this is already in decimal. Let's convert this into decimal by multiplying by 4 over 4. We haven't changed this value. This 4 over 4 is just 1. 11 over, it should say 11 over 20. It should say 11 over 20, because you see, 11 over 25 will give us 44, and 44 doesn't belong here. 44 doesn't belong here. I meant to say 11 over 20, in which case, you would have to multiply top and bottom by 5 over 5. Very good. Now it makes sense. So the quantity that was given to us, the original quantity that was given to us was 11 over 20, not 25, in which case, to convert that to 100, we will multiply top and bottom by 5 over by 5, which gives us 11 times 5 is 55 over 100. It boils down to 0.55. So, so far we're comparing 0 0.555, 0 0.55, and you can pretty much guess what's going to happen here. If this is 0 0.555 and this is 0.55, this one would have to be 0.5 repeating. Let's find out, shall we? We're going to divide 5 by 9. We're going to divide the 5 by 9. How many 9 does 5 have? 5 has no 9. It's too puny to have any 9s. Let's introduce a decimal. This becomes a 50. How many 
9 does 50 here, you know, 9 fives are 45. You see where it's going, right? 9 fives are 45. You have a remainder of 5, you introduce a 0, you get a 50 again. So 9 fives are 45. You get a 5 for remainder, introduce a 0, 9 fives are 45. And it's just going to go on forever. It's 0.5 repeating. It's 0.5 repeating. The question we have to ask ourselves is, even though this goes on forever, for comparison purposes, how many decimal places do we how many decimal places do we need? Well this one has three, this one has two, this one has three, we need to go up to four. Because if we stop right there, it will end up looking like this quantity is the same as that one, which it is not. Because this one ends, it's just 0.555. This one doesn't end. This is bigger because it goes on forever. Let's introduce one more. Four is all we need. Four is all, four is all we need. That's it, we are done. We can erase all of this thing because we need the room. So it's in theory, of course, it goes on forever. We need four places only. And this is two places. This is three places. 0 0.555. 0 0.5555. Now, introduce the zeros and we are all done. This one has four decimal places. This one has three. Introduce one decimal place. Introduce two. That's it. We are done. The intermediate step, I'm not going to do it out because we just did it in the previous question, which is to multiply everything by 10,000. Only if you wanted to. But you should be able to see that when you multiply everything by 10,000, we move the decimal place four parts, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. This will become, this will become 5,550. This is exactly 5,500. And this is 5,555. We're being asked to compare from least to greatest. This guy is the least. This guy is the greatest. So the least is going to be 5,500. Greatest is 5,555. And the, and the one in the middle is 5,550. That's voila. This is 50 more than this guy, this is 5 more than that guy. Anyway, this is the smallest one. Where did this one come from? This one came from here. This one came from here, which was 11 over 20. Which was 11 over 20. The greatest one is 5,555, which is right here, which came from here. And the one in the middle was this one. That's it. That's it. We have done it. We have done it from least to the greatest. 1120, 1120 is less than 0.555, which in turn is less than 5 over 9. Because 5 over 9 is 0.5 repeating forever. This one stopped after the third place, and this is only has two places. It's just 0.55. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one, two, one more. As I said, we can do four of them. This is our third one. And then after that, we have one more, and then that's it. We have one sixth. We have forty one over two fifty. And we have sixteen point seven percent. This is a tricky one. This is a tricky one because it has everything. It has the fraction, it has the percentage. Oh it doesn't have a decimal, it just has a fraction and a percentage. I thought it only I thought it also had decimal. Let's get going, shall we? Let's get going. Well, again, the trick is to try to convert the bottom into a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000. But well, this is already more than a 10. It's already more than a 100. Let's convert it into 1,000. 250 times what will give us 1,000, do you know? Well, obviously, 250 times 4 will give us 1,000 because 25 times 4 is 100. We, wanna, we don't want 100. We want 1,000. Let's multiply it by 4 over 4. It's still the same quantity, we haven't changed anything. It's just that now we'll have a thousand at the bottom. So let's find out. 40 times 40 times 4 is 160. 160 plus 4 is 164. Over 1000. You see? This 4 is not 40. It's not 40. How do I know that it's not 40? Well, it's not 40. That's probably because why it is called 41. 41, this is the tens digit, this has four tens. So 40 times 4 is 160, and 40 times 1 is 4. In other words, 44s are 160. We don't need 44s, we need 41 fours. So add one more 4 to it, you're going to end up with 164. 164 over 1000, which is going to end up giving you 0 0.164, 164. This one, when we convert into decimal, we have to divide 
this, if you want to convert it into decimal, you have to divide by 100, and then by doing so, it turns into 0.167. Oh, there you go. This guy is already bigger than this guy. I wonder what that guy is. Let's find out, shall we? We have to divide 1 by 6, which is exactly what we're going to do longhand. We're going to divide 1 by 6. How many 6 does 1 have? 1 has no 6. 1 is too puny to have any 6. Let's introduce a decimal, shall we? Let's introduce a decimal. It becomes a 10. 10 has 1 6. We have 4. Let's get a 0 there. How many 6 does 4 have? 6 6 is 6, 6, 36. 6 6 is 36. Again, you can see where it's going. We have a 4 again. Introduce a 0. Okay, so it becomes a 6 6 is 36. 4 again. Introduce a 0. It's going to go on forever. It's 0 0.16 repeating. 0 0.16 repeating. It's very statistic so we can have the room. It is 0 0.16 repeating. 0. 0.16 repeating. It's going to go on forever. The question is, how far do you go? Well, it depends how many digits we have. We have 3 here and 3 here. We can't stop at 3, because if we stop at 3, then it looks like this guy is bigger. Actually, that guy is bigger. We can stop right here. That guy is bigger. 7 is more than 6. Now, had that been also 6, listen carefully, had this been 0.166, if this quantity had been 0.16, we couldn't have stopped here, because then it would look like they would have both equal. In which case we would have had to we would have had to go one more digit. But here we can stop right here. We multiply everything by a thousand. As we multiply everything by a thousand, which really we don't have to, we can see clearly what's going to happen when you multiply everything by a thousand. Essentially, what we're comparing here, essentially what we're comparing here is 166 versus 164 versus 167. 167 is the greatest. 164 is the least. Let's arrange them, shall we? Where did this 164 come from? It came from 41 over 41 over 250. 41 over 250. That's the least. That's that is the least. The greatest one is 167, which is this guy, 16.7 percent. And the least, of course, is 16. Oh, sorry. The one in the middle, are there, is 16. There you go. We have arranged them from least to greatest. All done. Simple enough. Let's do the one last one, shall we? One last one. You do it. I'm going to give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. You do it yourself. We have a third versus three tenths versus point three three. See what you can do. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video and get out of your way. You do it yourself. All right. Now that you have had the chance to do it yourself, let's compare your work with the work that you and I will do together, shall we? Your, keep your work neat and clean, don't make a mess. The neat work, clean work makes it easier for you to follow your work during the exam. Because that's the least, that's the last worry you want in the exam, having to find your stuff on the piece of paper there, on the scratch paper. Keep it neat and clean. Like we just did in the black, but nicely organized. This is the third, this is the tenth. Let's convert that into fraction, shall we? This which is very easy. Let's multiply this quantity, the top and the bottom by a hundred top and the bottom by 100. Now, if it makes it easier, if it makes it easier for you to see, visually that is, write this as 0 0.33 over 1. Now we can see multiplying bottom by 100. So if we multiply top by 100, 0 0.33 over 100 is just 33, it's just 33 over 100. So we have 33 over 100, we have 3 over 10, and then we have 1 over 3. Well, this is actually very simple, because we can clearly see that 3 times 100 is 300, and 300, of course, is also a multiple of 10. Let's do that, shall we? Let's make the common denominator of 300. Let's give everybody a 3. Let's give everybody the same denominator, and as long as all of these fractions have the same denominator, as long as they have a common denominator, the denominator will cease to play any role. The denominator will cease to have any significance. 
at that point, at which point we all we all we will have to do is simply compare the numerators because they have the same denominator. Let's find out, shall we? Let's see how we can do that. Let's make everybody 300. This is very simple. Multiply this guy by 3 over 3. All done. We want this to be 300. Let's multiply that guy by 30 over 30. 30 over 30. And we want this guy. We want this guy to be 300. Let's multiply this by 100 over 100. Well, watch, watch what happens. So, multiply 100 over 100, it gives 100 over 300. Which of course is not a surprise, obviously 100 over 300 is one third. We just cross out the two, the divide top and bottom by 100, and we're going to end up where we started. Because we just multiply top and bottom by 100, if you will divide this quantity by your top and bottom by 100, that will give us one third, what we started obviously. And here we'll end up with 3 times 3 times 30, which is 90 over 300. And this one 30, 3 times 3 will give us 99 over 300. That's it, we're done. Since they all have the same denominator, we just have to look at the denominator. 100 versus 90 versus 99. 100 is the greatest one, 90 is the least one, and this guy is going to go in the middle. So we want, we were asked to compare from least to the great, arrange from least to greatest. Least is the least is this guy, which is three tenth. The greatest one is hundred, which is going to go here, which came from one third. And the one in the middle, so pay attention here. Hundred is the biggest one, which came from here, which goes there. That is the greatest one. This guy was the least one because that one came from ninety over three hundred, which was three tenth which was 310, because if you were to divide top and bottom by 10, 0 will drop out, you'll end up with 9 over 30. If you divide top and bottom by 3, it'll give you 3 over 10, which is exactly like what we had there. That's the least one. Where is the middle one? So that's 90, that's 100, we need 99, which was this guy, 0 0.33. There we go. Arrange from least to greatest. In the next video, we'll solve the three problem that you see in the book. Okay? I know.